Hi everyone, Jason here at the Whittier Public Library Children's Department with our latest steam-powered science take-home science activity. Um, today we are going to do a salt, magic salt snowflake painting since it's still winter time and we're going to learn a little bit about salt, we're going to learn a little bit about snowflakes, and we're going to learn a little bit about absorption. So um, hopefully you picked up one of our kits at the library. Um, if not, here's what you'll need. You'll need a piece of paper, or I used a little bit of thicker cardstock so it won't, the water won't soak through as easily. Um, and this one has some uh, patterns of snowflakes already printed on it. But um, if you want, you can also draw your own snowflakes, just use the backside. However, if you do draw your own snowflakes, remember if you want realistic snowflakes, real snowflakes almost always have six sides. So make sure you draw your snowflakes with six sides if you want them to be realistic. Okay, you're also going to need a little plastic capsule with a little bit of food coloring in it. Um, you'll be adding water to that later, so you're going to need to supply your own water. Um, you will need a pipette. This is called a pipette. It is used to transfer fluid or liquid from one place to another, and um, it's also known as an eyedropper. Oh, and by the way, I just wanted to mention, be careful with this stuff. It stains very easily. As you can see, I have some blue spots on my hand from handling it a little earlier. So be careful because that will stain things. You will also need some salt and you will need some glue. I gave you a couple little capsules full of glue. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's create our salt snowflake. So in order to do that, you're gonna need your uh, snowflake patterns. You can draw your own on the back if you prefer. Um, you're gonna need your glue and you're going to need your salt. Now remember to do this activity a couple hours, a few hours before you want to finish everything because you're gonna need time to get to let the glue dry. One other thing I would recommend is do all these activities on top of maybe a piece of cardboard or a cookie sheet if you have one or something like that because it can get a little messy and that will help contain the mess. Okay, let's go to a close up and I'll show you what you need to do here. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our salt snowflake. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our glue and we're going to outline all the lines of the snowflake. Now, remember, make sure all your glue is connected. You don't have any gaps in the glue. That's going to be important later on. So I'm going to go ahead and start this and show you what I'm doing. And then we're going to speed it up so you can see the finished product. Okay, now we've got our whole snowflake outline. Make sure to use a pretty generous amount of glue, but not so much it turns into a blob. You want to keep the shape of the snowflake. Next, we're going to take our salt. And since I have it, I'm going to use my shaker full of salt here, but you can use your bag, of course. And what we're going to do is we're going to spread a generous amount of salt over this whole thing. If you have any big chunks, you might want to pull them off. Just make sure we cover this whole thing. Oh, another big chunk. Get that out of there. Get the whole thing covered in salt. Okay, now I'm going to wait a few seconds here. Not too long. And then I'm going to give this a shake to get rid of the extra salt. If you see any stuck in, in between in the middle, you might want to get that loose too. Shake, 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 shake. Don't shake it too hard because you don't want to lose the salt that's on there. You want a good covering of salt. So you see, I'm now pretty well covered with salt. Now, remember, the next step is you're going to have to wait for this to dry for a few hours. So go ahead and put this aside somewhere safe and wait a few hours for it to dry if you put it out. Okay, so let's do our magic snowflake painting. So this is the part where the magic happens. Um, so we have our salt snowflake. It's all ready to go. It's nice and dry. And now we're gonna take our little plastic tub that has um, some food coloring in it. And remember, be careful with this. It stains very easily. So you wanna make sure to keep it off your table or you know wherever you're doing this. Don't get it on the table, don't get it on the carpet, anything like that. So we're gonna pour some water in here. And we're gonna just about fill this up. 
So we're gonna have a nice blue color there. Uh, we'll stir it up a little bit. Stir, stir, stir. Okay, now here's what we're gonna do. We are going to fill up our pipette. You do that by holding it outside the water. You squeeze it, put it in the water, let go. It'll suck up some, some of the blue water. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put one drip carefully right in the center. We're gonna see what happens. Ooh, you see how it spreads out through the, through the salt? Now let's put another drip on and see what happens. Another drip, it keeps spreading. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep dripping. I'm gonna do this in um, speeded up motion though, so you can see what will happen. If you'd like to, pause the video now and go ahead and do this. Keep dripping in the center and very slowly though, one drip at a time, let it soak in another drip and see what happens. Now I'm gonna do mine and we're gonna see what happens with this one. Just like magic. We dripped only in the center and yet our entire snowflake got painted. So, how do you think that happened? Okay, so let's talk a little bit about salt and absorption and what happened when you dripped your water on your snowflake. So, uh, salt is hygroscopic, and that means it very easily absorbs water. So, when you drip water onto your salt, those salt crystals are going to just suck up and absorb that water. Now, why did the um, water and the color spread out through the salt? Well, as each salt crystal gets absorbs water and becomes saturated, that means it becomes basically like filled up with water, then it's touching a salt crystal next to it. That one also really wants to absorb water and is easily absorbing that water. So it starts to pull the water out of the saturated salt crystal, the one that's full of water, and into itself and then eventually it gets saturated and it's touching the one next to it. That one then starts to absorb water and it becomes sort of a chain as the water goes from salt crystal to salt crystal and eventually you may find that the water goes all the way to the edges of the snowflake. So snowflakes are ice crystals that start as tiny, tiny little crystals high, high, high up in the atmosphere and continue to build and grow as they fall. Now, you've probably heard that no two snowflakes are ever alike, and we don't know whether, for certain whether that's true. There are actually scientists who study snowflakes. They can't say 100% for certain that that's true, but um, scientists have looked at a lot of pictures of thousands and thousands of snowflakes and they've never seen two that are exactly alike. So there's a good chance that every snowflake is in fact unique. Um, a little bit more about snowflakes. They almost always have six sides. And why do they have six sides? Well, we don't know for sure, but the reason we think is that when water freezes, it becomes a crystal. And the crystals that form when water freezes are actually six-sided crystals. So when a crystal first forms high up in the atmosphere, is a tiny, tiny little six-sided crystal. As it falls, more and more water molecules get added to the outside of that and it grows bigger and bigger, but it retains that six-sided shape. So that's why you almost always have six-sided snowflakes, although scientists have occasionally found some three-sided snowflakes. So they're rare, but they do happen. So um, if you'd like to stop by the Whittier Public Library and borrow some books to learn more about some of these topics, we have a lot of books available. We have books about snowflakes, um, we have books about salt, or perhaps some experiments you can do with water. Um, so please come by, get some books, and keep exploring. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you again soon.